Welcome to another episode of my Arisha journey. It's Daydream Austin, aka Oyagumi. How are you? Before we get into the topic today, I wanted to just let you know about a new offering that I have. So I know a lot of people are having issues finding reputable um, and authentic Babalawo Iyanifa to work with. Uh, I know we have an issue where people are sliding into DMs, um, babas are sliding into DMs and telling people they need to do um, this sacrifice or something bad is gonna happen to them. Don't pay that any mind. When you see those things come through, delete, block, keep it moving. Um, if you are interested in being connected to an authentic Nigerian Babalawo, you can contact me at my website, daydreamaustin.com. Uh, go into the description box and you'll find the, um, the contact information there, okay? So don't fall for the okie doke. If you're looking to have a, an IFA reading done, contact me through that link and I'll get you hooked up, okay? Great. Now, today I wanted to talk about what you need to do before initiation. So I get a lot of messages and people are wondering, you know, how do I get initiated? And then when I start to question them more to find out, you know, what they've done to prepare for initiation, I find that a lot of people are coming in and going from zero to 100 too damn quick, right? So what you don't want to do is rush into initiation. It's not that type of party. This is not the way things are done. So in Yoruba land, um, people don't just go get initiated. They usually go through training, right? Or their family line has been, um, of course, as soon as I start recording, people want to make a whole bunch of noise, right? But okay, so it's either, you know, they get a lot of training before they go for initiation, or there's a particular Orisha that's over someone's family line and then they go and initiate into that because, you know, that's their lineage, their destiny. Uh, here, because we're just finding out about the tradition, there's a tendency to just go straight for initiation. But you still don't want to rush. Everything with Ifa is about patience. And when I say everything, as you really get into this tradition and this lifestyle, you'll see that part of the character building involved is being patient is waiting, is not rushing, right? Is not wanting things to happen immediately. It doesn't work like that. And as a Westerner, we come in with that notion already. Like things are supposed to happen quick. You know, if I want something to eat, I can go outside and get something prepared right away. Um, if I wanna order something, I can go and, and have it next day shipping. That's not the way this works. Everything takes time, okay? That's first, number one. So the first thing you want to do before you run and get initiated is you want to start slowly by getting readings. Get Idafa, which are Ifa readings, right? You want to connect with a reputable um, Baba Iyanifa, Baba Lawo Iyanifa or Olorisha. And you want to have readings done periodically before you run and get initiated. So some people get them monthly, some people get them bi-monthly, but this is your way to get tidbits of information from Ifa about your destiny, about the directions you're going in, whether or not they're good directions to go in, about your taboos, things you should stay away from. You'll find out what Orisha are rocking with you at the moment, like who's standing up for you. So for me, in addition to Oya, of course, right, because I'm an, I am an initiative of Oya, Ogun comes up big time. Like Ogun is with me all, and I love Ogun, but Ogun, when Ogun comes up, you know that fight can come up too, you know? But so can perseverance and, and working through something and really plowing through things. So you'll start to see this pattern of, you know, what you should go towards, what you should stay away from, what Orisha are standing for you and what Orisha are requiring 
uh, at both sacrifice of you that's very very helpful so that's number one before you're like oh I'm gonna go get initiated no I say go through a year of getting consistent um, even if it's bi-monthly readings to get a, a feel for what it is you're you're going towards and I say after you get those readings make sure you do your own research Right, we have the internet, not everything on the internet is right and correct, but you can take those old dudes that come down in your readings, go and research and learn even more about yourself. Okay, that's number one. Number two, before you jump into this lifestyle, study. Study the Ifa lifestyle. Find out what it is about. What are you getting yourself into? Trust me, you have no idea. Now, if you're one of those people who just are going to get initiated, sit your pot in a corner, right? Sit your Orisha in a corner, sit your Ifa in a corner and let it get dusty and not touch it. Fine, then go rush and get initiated. Sorry for being sarcastic, y'all. That's my Aquarius in me. I'm sorry. Now, if you're actually going to work these things, right, and do what you're supposed to do, then you want to study the lifestyle. Some ways you can study the lifestyle are, you know, social media is really great. You can follow people like myself, um, other Olorisha, which are um, priests of an Orisha, specific Orisha, um, Babalawo, Ianifa, people initiated into Ifa. You can follow these people and you'll see by what they're posting, what their lives are like, what they go towards, what they do, right? How much effort goes into this lifestyle because it's not easy you know and i mean not to say that it's it's hard it's just not something that you do once a week right so you know we do have say i have my oya and once a week i go to oya and i i pray and i make my offerings and things like that if i have if i do the same thing on that day of the week but then there's character building in between that. There's being um, making sure that I'm walking with good and gentle character. That's not easy for me, especially gentle character. Are you kidding me? That's not easy for me, <laughs> which is why Ogun be standing with me all the time, you know, and, and well, yeah. Um, so it's like character building. There's taboos, right? Things that I have to avoid because that is part of my destiny, right? The things that I need to avoid so that I can be on point, the things that I need to go towards in order to support my destiny. But you're studying the lifestyle. Um, what are some other things you can do to study the lifestyle? Study the Odus. As you study the Odus, you'll start to see patterns um, about behavior, right? Things about patience may come up a lot for you. Things about walking with a cool head. Um, Things about stubbornness may come up. You'll find things you just have to really pay attention, right? So that's number two. Study the lifestyle because you don't know what you're getting into until, you, you know, you're in it. But you can get an idea of what you're going towards. And, you know, um, if you feel comfortable, reach out to some of the people you're following. If you know people in the tradition, ask them what it's like. What does a day look like for you as an initiate? Okay, number three. Now, number three is self-exploration. You want to do a lot of self-exploration, self-reflection prior to initiation. And the reason why I say this is because when you initiate, right, you get these, you get information about yourself. Again, these are things that you should go towards things that you should stay away from, challenges that come up in your life. But just because you're aware of these things doesn't mean they go away right away, right? And to be quite honest with you, in my opinion, I feel like certain character traits are played up after initiation. So if you have um, anger issues, those don't disappear because you've initiated mental illness does not disappear because you've been initiated right sometimes I feel like there's a light actually shined on some of our um more difficult traits character traits and we are really forced to deal with them or we'll find a lot more heartache and hardship 
So when I say self-exploration, one of the things that I've been doing that I find helpful is um, paying attention to natal charts. So your natal chart is, you know, your astrology. It's where the planets were the moment you were born. So um, in the des description box, I'm going to put a link where you can go and enter your information, your date of birth, the time you were born is really important, and where you were born. And it'll give you like an exact snapshot of where everything was the moment you came through the birth canal and here to the earth. And as you go through these, this information, right, because you'll be able to see what those different planetary placements mean. You'll read stuff about yourself and you're going to be like, oh, sh like it's uncanny, right? But then I noticed when I went for initiation and they, you know, they give you the information about yourself, things you struggle with. It's some of the same things that I got there in Nigeria that I can find in my birth chart. So in order to prepare, right, um, in order to, to really go into this, knowing who you are, right, the challenges you're coming in with and all of that, it's really good to do that self-exploration part. And in addition to your natal chart, I would say just sit down, do some real um, meditation on patterns in your life that keep reoccurring, things that keep happening. You're like, what? I went through this already. You know, why I keep going through the same things? That's part of your destiny but it's a part of your destiny that you have to like figure out so that you can overcome it. Um, that'll probably come up in your, your natal chart and it will probably come up when you go for initiation. Okay. Um, there was one more thing. Oh, the last thing. Um, the reason why I say get readings before you go for initiation, my Baba has said on more than one occasion that during readings, sometimes there'll be old dudes that come up where people are actually being encouraged to go back to a different religion, right? Say they came from Christianity or from Islam. They'll be told to go back to that and to really put their heart and their all into it. So the, the thing about getting readings beforehand is it really helps you to know if you're on destiny by even coming this route, okay? So... Those are some of my suggestions of things that you should do before you initiate. Ifa is all about the long game, guys. This is not a short-term quick fix. Um, and that's something that I'm being attuned to because I think I came in with this notion that um, it was just going to fix everything and fix everything very quickly. This is the, about the long game. If you do not have the patience to see things through and to wait and to really study, study yourself, study the tradition, um, work through some of your personal challenges, it's none of, none of, whatever you do is not going to matter unless you have the patience, the perseverance to do those things, okay? So remember, you can go to my website, contact me if you want to. Uh, get a reading by an authentic Nigerian Babalawa who won't scam you. And also, just follow me. Make sure you subscribe to my email updates. I do have a resource page called My Arisha Journey on my website where I list some different things you can check out. And that's it. Guys, it was so good talking to you. See you next time. Bye.